All right, uh, FRQ number five from the 2024 AP Statistics uh, exam. Um, there are no solutions out, so if I have any corrections, I inevitably I make mistakes on some of these, okay? So bear with me. It, any corrections will be in a pinned comment below. So check that before you kind of point out some things to me. Um, baseball cards are trading at cards that feature data on a player's performance. Michelle, National Baseball Card Collectors Convention with approximately 20,000 attendees. She noticed that some collectors have both regular cards, which are easily obtained, and rare cards, which are harder to obtain. Michelle believes that there's a relationship between the number of months a collector has been collecting baseball cards and whether the majority of the cards and their collection are regular or rare. Okay, she obtains information from a random sample of 500 baseball card collectors in the convention. So it's a random sample. We know that. And records how many months they've been collecting baseball cards and whether the majority of the cards in their card collection are regular or rare. Her results are displayed in the two-way table here. Okay, two-way table already kind of like tells me like, well, it's a count, some kind of chi-squared maybe, right? Like that, you know, regular, fewer, you know, like how many months they've been collecting. If one collector from the sample is selected at random, what's the probability that the collector has been collecting baseball cards for 11 or more months and, ha and has a majority of, re of regular baseball cards? Show your work. So we're selecting out of the entire, out of the five. So you always have to think about what's the probability is we're grabbing someone out of what? Out of the 500. And so we want the probability they've been collecting 11 or more months. So that means in this region. And they have majority, has a majority of regular baseball cards. So we're talking about these guys right here. These are the guys that have a re majority of regular baseball cards and they're 11 months or greater. So then this probability is going to be 71 plus 76 plus 112 divided by what are we pulling from? We're pulling from all 500. So it's going to be like that. So 71 plus 76 plus 100, oops, 71 plus 76 plus 112 divided by 500 is 0 0.518. All right, given, so given is always saying like, oh, I'm conditioning it. I'm not saying that like I'm grabbing from everyone necessarily, but I'm saying given that a randomly selected camp has been collecting baseball cards for fewer than six months. So now what we're saying is we're saying we're for sure only considering people in this bracket right here, okay? We're only considering, because the given means that it's happened. We've done the probability and we know that for sure that it's fewer than six months. That's what given means. It's like already a state of fact. We're not including any of those other people. What is the probability has a majority of regular baseball cards? Well, it's going to be 80 out of the total of the, it's going to be 80 out of 91. Okay. And that's 0 0.8791. Okay. So we're only considering the given part because it's they're given fewer than six months. So we're just considering 80 out of the 91 there, out of the total in that group there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to clean this up because I'm going to print these out as PDF notes. So I'll try to make it legible for you guys if you guys are looking at them. Okay. Michelle believes there's a relationship between the number of months spent collecting baseball cards and which type of card is the majority in the collection. Name a hypothesis test Michelle should use to investigate her belief. Do not perform the hypothesis test. Okay. All right. So this is a, a chi, the, the hypothesis test is a high, chi squared test, but um, I don't know what they're saying. So it's a chi squared test for association. Yeah. For chi squared, there's three kinds. There's goodness of fit. Okay. There's um, independence and association. So she believes there's a relationship between the number of months spent in collecting cards and which target's the majority. Now, this one's a little bit subtle. There's um, on the chi-squared, because it's a little bit, because your calculator, in, in terms of actual the performance, there's the test for, um, let me explain, let me break it down. There's independence, and then there's, um, and there's um, homogeneity. Homogeneity is the other one. I shouldn't say association. So homogeneity or independence. Now, she thinks there's a relationship. Homogeneity means that, like, they come from the same, they're, they're, they're both combined and they come from the same group. In this case, because they're, we're talking about two different kind of factors, the number of months collecting them, and then which one is the majority, which type of card is a majority, that's a chi-square test for independence. That's, that's what I would put here, not for homogeneity. It's very subtle between homogeneity and independence, but this one's probably a little bit more clearly independence, because I just want to know, are these two independent events? That is, the number of months spent versus homogeneity means it's almost like two different characteristics, but they're describing the same kind of group of people in a way. 
I don't know, like, I, I, it, this is one of the things that I'm not, like, super... I think it's it's a little bit subjective, and I also think it's kind of irrelevant whether it's homogeneity or independence, because you typically run the test the same. The conclusion is not significantly different, or at least in a material way. So the subtlety between homogeneity and independence is not, in a in practical sense, very important. I will see what they go. I would go with independence. You could have gone with homogeneity. It probably would still count. I don't know, like if they're going to be that picky, because usually that that distinction is one subtle, okay, and then also pretty meaningless. Like it has no real practical difference in, in reality of of when you run hypothesis tests. Okay, state the appropriate null and alternative hypothesis for the hypothesis you identified. See, I do not perform the hypothesis test. So so whatever you picked here, okay then then just be consistent with that. So the null hypothesis is that um, um, there is no relationship. Or they're independent between number of months spent collecting and type of card is majority. And then the alternative, <laughs> there is a relationship. <laughs> That's uh, and and you do have to stay in context. It's kind of annoying. You can't just say there's no relationship. There's a relationship. You should say between. This is one of those picky things between number of months spent collecting and type of card. God, I can't even fit all that in there. They just have you make you write so much stuff. But you, you ought to do do that. Okay. After completing the hypothesis test described in Part C, Michelle obtains a p-value of 0.0075. Assuming the conditions for inference are met, what conclusion should Michelle make about her belief? There is sufficient evidence because because the 0 0.0075 is less than an assumed assumed alpha of 0 0.05. Then we would say there is sufficient evidence... that Michelle is correct, is correct, and there is an association, a, 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 a relationship between, what do you got to say? Between the number of months collecting, number of months they've been collecting, and the type of card that is majority that is majority okay i'm not you don't have to be super grammatically correct just sort of something that's reasonably written out um and that would cover that one 